Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And yeah, this is a bit of a catch-up episode, kind of all over the place, too. A little bit closer to being on schedule. You know how the sort of things are. Not the last one before the end of the year. I got one more that is planned. But let's before we get into all that, let's get on the pulse. So before we go any further, if you'd like to like and subscribe, I would be extremely grateful. Again, with these ones that are kind of all over the place, share it if you want to. You never know how much traction this is going to get amidst the flurry of other content coming out around this time of the year. But now onto the matter at hand. We got seven projects on the docket. Let's first start off with From the Future Sound of London, Rituals E7001. This has been on my schedule for months, and if you know about this UK electronic duo, you'll get why. Sprawling across IDM, goopy psychedelia, and ambient techno, starting off with a trio of critically adored, if a bit dated albums in the early 90s, and then spending the next 25 years making textured, genre-bending, weird shit. Now this is their first of a new trilogy in the long-running environment series and look I get the appeal it's very tropical eclectic in some of the instrumental choices burbling ambient techno that's well balanced and atmospheric and alien but accessible in a lot of brighter but also haunted moments but this duo runs on a lot of quantity over quality and while this starts off pretty strong it loses its way in a wilderness that you have heard before coupled with some shaky bass mixing and rather limited momentum and experimentation call it a good if inessential album best for the diehard fans hit or miss from benjamin clementine and i have been this is an odd one english singer songwriter sitting between delicate piano jazz soul contemporary classical and experimental pop he's often tasteful but dense where the early albums took a while to click but they ultimately quite impressed me so now five years later with this as the first part of a new trilogy bizarrely it might be his most accessible in composition and structure for sure his writing is at his most direct peeling through unexpected love and domesticity to which he expects to be doomed in present times it does feel like a pandemic record and the omnipresent dread claustrophobia and a lot of constraints of self-production very conscious of just being trapped in a lot of decaying cycles old and new but while the shorter song focus makes for easier listens the weighty weirder theatricality i liked just isn't as potent so yeah it's good with some promising greatness but ultimately kind of scattered and underpowered just kind of hit and miss. From the Arctic Monkeys, the car. Can you tell I've been avoiding this? Well, there was some people who still cared and pushing past thinking that minus the concept of tranquility-based hotel and casino, this is just trying to rip off Josh Tillman and Dan Behar. Well, I'm not that impressed. Yeah, it's well-produced for lush, strings-inflected late 70s, early 80s, soft rock, funk, and David Bowie plagiarisms. But between Alex Turner's mediocre falsetto and vamping, some weak song structures, and a disturbing lack of hooks, this runs together fast. The songs are just not there. And yes, I know that it's all about the chintzy opulence, the existential confusion and miscommunications, self-references to their career pivot, a neo-noir attitude obscuring a lot of lonely, insecure angst, but it's all around a sour, self-impressed character who hasn't changed and is way less clever than he thinks he is. So like a lot of the forgotten yacht rock of that era, this is often pretty, but functionally vacant and obnoxious. Skip it. From wise blood and in the darkness hearts aglow i got so much backlash for just being lukewarm on titanic rising relax the album's good andromeda is excellent i just wasn't as impressed by the opulent fatalism and some of the decidedly odd swerves so with the reception still good but more muted this time well i wouldn't call this any of her best but it's still quite good the contemporary fatalism it's still here occasionally a little awkward and some lyrical choices around radical vulnerability but tempered with some tortured love songs that at least seem to yearn for better and she can sell it all. And while so much of this is lush, subtly textured, vintage Baroque pop, it's actually a little closer to mid-70s soft rock. Immaculately produced, extremely well performed, outside of having more sprawl than structure, some clunky pacing, and really odd synth choices. I don't know, if I hadn't heard this style done better or just overexposed in 2022, but okay, yeah, it's still good, just doesn't quite wow me from fred again actual life three let me make it clear, I get the fundamental appeal of Fred again and his blurry, diaristic approach to house music, full of yearning for that communal but fleeting dance floor, especially after the past couple of years. So, 
it's comfortable. You could argue it's got a similar fundamental appeal to Jamie XX's In Color. Funny as the XX show up on this album, as well as production from Skrillex and Fortet and vocals from Dermot Kennedy, 070 Shake, and Blue. But In Color had hooks and took some wildly organic swings, felt huge. Whereas this feels a lot smaller, more reliant on some sampled callbacks than stronger tunes, and lacking any of those transcendent moments or any real adventurous swell in house. Yeah, small scale heartbreak and yearning, it can be effective, but through a lot of half form pitch shifted fragments, it just doesn't cut more deeply for me. It's a decent listen, just not all that memorable. Just saying. From Emotional Oranges, The Juice. Volume 3. The frustrating thing with this duo at this point is that they still make terrific liquid, organic, guitar-backed R&B with an increasingly diverse palette outside of some questionably mixed percussion, but they've also set the bar so high with their very first EP that it's hard for me not to wish for more of that. Once again, the internal narrative isn't exactly self-contained. They've admitted it's more autobiographical amount in the male singer's life, but the buried, complicated subtext created by our duo feels very sensual, implied a lot more interesting, emotive melodrama and the very lean, effective writing, and the chemistry is still top notch. That being said, their approach in writing feels a little bit less novel, and it absolutely feels like they've gotten as much out of the Juice series as they possibly can, so yeah, absolutely my favorite flavor of R&B. This is great. They should have had a TikTok hit years ago. Check it out. From RM indigo. So I'm gonna say it, the more I've heard the solo projects of BTS members, the more I'm annoyed with the very obvious and bland English market pop crossovers. BTS have always had broader influences than they utilize, and when one of their rappers, RM, put out a project with features including Erica Badu and Anderson Pock, I was curious, I wanted to hear it. And thus, well, it's a loosely constructed, breezy bit of pop rap where you can tell some corners were cut in the production and the guests are more here for the cosign rather than delivering top material. It's not bad. As expected, the pop song construction is rock solid, especially if you like some chill acoustic J-pop influences and lightweight crossover hip hop, but it's not like alienation between fame, humanity, and authentic artistry is all that fresh, especially as RM's perspective is mature, but not exactly deep. Some of it might get lost in translation. Overall, very easy, generally likable lesson. Just measure your expectations. So yeah, once again, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, maybe share this around, I would be extremely grateful. Yes, we're heading into year-end list season. They will be likely coming in and around my final episode here, where I'm probably got another six, seven albums I'm looking to cover. We'll have to see how it goes. It's going to be kind of compressed in the last couple weeks of the year. Plus, again, holidays, family stuff. You all know the jazz. Beyond that, though, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And hey, if you want to do something for the holidays, like, hey, support this channel, buy friends and family, some of my merch, that's not weird at all. Beyond that, though, if you guys want to get involved, help support the channel, maybe get albums on my schedule for the next upcoming year, or hell, just argue with me directly on my Discord, link to my Patreon is right over there. Please don't feel obligated. Tough times, I understand, especially around the holidays, I completely get it. But the option is available. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching On the Pulse on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.